Hello everyone and welcome on the Papier de Rêve channel. I'm Ursula and today I will be painting with you some flowers of Bougainvillea. These flowers are for me the symbol of Spain and Barcelona, uh, just because you can see them everywhere here and they are blooming all the time, uh, I feel. Uh, here in winter there are some uh, blooming in the parks, so it's a really nice uh, flower that uh, uh, add a lot of colors uh, in, uh, in the parks. So today I'm not experimenting, I just want to paint what's is in my head and I want to focus myself on uh, bringing some uh, uh, energy uh, and some power to, to this flower on my paper. And that's why I'm starting with a big bold splash of pink on this paper, uh, just because I want to paint uh, Bougainvillea flowers and what color are they? Pink. So I will start with the pink and make it bold. And then I will add some colors and, and nuances to, to this, but I want to start uh, really strong uh, and I'm painting quite quickly also, uh, just because I want to keep this feeling of uh, strongness and power. And in this idea of uh, bold, strong and powerful strokes, I'm using a big brush, a big flat brush, uh, just because I can get uh, colors uh, really fast with this brush because it's, it is so big. And I also cannot uh, work uh, with details uh, with this brush because it is so big. So it's a perfect brush for me to express myself quite quickly and strongly. So I've started with this pink, which is uh, Rosemadder Lake from Sennelier. It's a really uh, strong pink that uh, stay really bright um, even if it, uh, it dry. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a really interesting pink. I've think about uh, using uh, Opera Pink for this painting, but uh, it's a little bit too much uh, in the fluorescent side of the pink and I wanted something more subtle and something that uh, blends very well with the other color too. And I will add uh, lots of colors after this uh, strong pink, uh, but I will mix always a little bit of this pink in every other color so that uh, the greens are not too bright uh, and they are a little bit more natural because uh, pink and red in general are a complementary color to green. So uh, if you mix them, uh, you will obtain a gray. Uh, so a tiny bit of pink or red in a green can make it a little bit uh, on the muddier side. And so it's look a it look a little bit more natural. And this first layer is very uh, blurry. There is no uh, strong uh, marks and sharp edges on my paper. Uh, and that's what I want for a first layer so that I can work uh, in, with a little bit of details in the layer after, which I'm doing right here. I've changed my brush. Uh, I went from uh, this uh, big flat brush to a big round brush. Uh, and that's just because I want uh, still to be very strong in my uh, brush strokes, but I want also a little bit more details in some area and a round brush will help me uh, with this kind of details because I can use the very tip of the brush and make very fine uh, brush strokes, but I can also uh, use all the body of uh, the brush and make a really bold, uh, bold strokes also. And when I'm uh, working on the second layer, that's all I want. I want some uh, bold area still, but I want to be able also to make uh, some tiny details here and there so that you can uh, start to see what I'm painting and understand my painting. And for the colors, I'm using some different colors that I'm used to uh, at uh, the moment. Uh, you have seen a lot of uh, Nicola the yellow and OC red gold in my painting, but today I'm using uh, Quinacridone gold. And I've chosen this color in particular because I know it mixes really well with ultramarine blue and viridian. It makes uh, beautiful greens that can be very warm uh, with uh, ultramarine blue, but also quite cold with the viridian, uh, which is quite a, a strange color because it's a, a really a cold green, uh, quite unrealistic at all. But mixed with uh, quinacridone gold, it uh, it looks a little bit more natural and have a really uh, 
nice uh, effect uh, on my paper. And Viridian is also a really a nice color mixed with uh, the Rose Mother Lake uh, because they are uh, quite complementary and they make a, a really beautiful gray, uh, a colorful gray if I can say so. Uh, and I use it in my mix of uh, put to create this violet you can see on my paper. It darken uh, a little bit the violet but it also apports a, a, a tint of muted uh, colors in this violet so that it looks a little bit more natural and not so vibrant because Ultramarine Blue and Rose Mother Lake uh, just alone are uh, making quite a vibrant uh, violet, uh, very strong. So toning it down with a little bit of Viridian is uh, the way I've chosen for myself uh, to make all these darker colors on this painting. Right now I think that you can see uh, the flower emerge on my paper uh, and the painting has a little bit more uh, sense uh, for you, I hope so uh, at least. And I will need uh, to add a little bit more details in a third layer, of course. But uh, this painting will stay a little bit abstract uh, just because I want this energy and power to emerge from this painting. And I don't want to have a botani botanical realistic painting uh, with this one. I will let this uh, second layer dry and I will talk you through uh, from the supplies. Uh, I'm using an Escoda Ultimo uh, 1 inch, an Escoda Aquario number 18, and also a Rosemary Co. Series 39 half an inch. And for the colors, I'm using Ultramarine Blue, Veridian, Kinacridon Gold, and Rose Mother Lake. And my paper is Canson Heritage in Hot Pressed. As you can see, I'm using quite a few uh, colors for this painting, just four. Uh, and I could have done it with three uh, by uh, eliminating the Viridium, uh, but I think it adds a little bit more interest to this painting, uh, just because uh, Rose Mother Lake and Viridian are making really a beautiful mixes together. Uh, and I can get a really uh, darker color with Ultramarine Blue. Uh, so this uh, combo is working really great together, but if at home you have just three colors, you can totally do it. Uh, there is no problem uh, with that. For this third and last layer, I'm using a dagger brush, uh, which allows me to add uh, really tiny details on my paper, but also uh, bolder strokes uh, if I use all the body of the brush. Uh, and uh, I have this nicely uh, random uh, shapes that I can make because the hair are very, very long in this brush. And it allows me to add a little bit of life in this painting uh, just because of all these wonder marks I can make uh, with uh, this brush. Uh, and it adds a lot of texture and uh, interest to, to the painting. It was a really nice uh, painting to make uh, just because I was able to be uh, very bold and uh, uh, I had uh, really a lot of fun by uh, painting all these uh, strong brush strokes on my paper. And I think that it's uh, thanks to uh, Alvaro Castagne. I was able to uh, see him again in, uh, in Barcelona this week. Uh, it, uh, he offers a, a workshop, uh, a free workshop here in, uh, in Spain just uh, before the confinement. Uh, so, so he has inspired me a lot, even if uh, we are quite uh, different in style. Uh, he is painting a lot of buildings and city, and I'm painting mostly flowers. So we are uh, very st strongly different, but that's quite interesting to see another painting to paint uh, and see how it uh, he work uh, and grab some uh, techniques or uh, way to paint uh, to integrate to your own painting. I think it's, uh, it's quite interesting. And this video is now ending, thanks for watching and I hope you like it. Uh, please check the blog post for more information about uh, this uh, painting and uh, tell me what you think in the comments. See you soon. <laughs>